want the bag. Work my way from a garden to a track. Flip it from a track to a plot full of acres. Do it for the farmers and the producers and the makers. What we even here for? Occasionally I ask it. I know it's more than struggling, anticipating the casket. Reap what we sow, trying to fill up my basket. Life's a plantation, I self law and master. Over the plot, I've been granted on this planet Now we're slanted, cause the chosen been supplanted But if you overstand it, it was spoken Fracture, but we ain't broken Even though some would rather play the role of token We growing Black through the essence of a presence We carry the blood of gods, we carry the mind of peasants Rich black gardens, future look more like Eden Multiply seeds like the seed banks in Sweden Rep my planners on plan according to season Be one code Switching it up is treason. Black power, family, what we eat. Either we get fed or we feed. Be one act. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit educational person to use tips to balance in favor of fair use. Welcome, Black. Welcome, Black. Welcome, Black. This is John Henry Harris. We also have former Brown EMC. It's another episode of B1 Ag, the Daily Bread Podcast. Now, we, uh, fast food. Fast food has been is become a major food source for the average American. When I say a major food source, more people probably eat fast food than actually going to eat uh, fresh prepared meals from the grocery store. So, you know, it is what it is. You know, uh, food preparation does take time. It does take planning. And uh, in today's world, you know, we have to hustle and bustle and work. And, you know, we're ripping and running and it's just a lot more convenient to get fast food. However, there's been a lot of independent studies that have taken place when it comes to fast food. And they're showing that like, okay, this fast food that we ingest and eat so much, but it takes so long for it to spoil if it ever spoils. And that's what we're going to address today. WTF. What is this? And fast food is ungodly slow to spoil. And we're going to talk about this just to show you and give you evidence of because we know food, all food has is supposed should have a some kind of a shelf life. But fast foods, chef life. It doesn't make sense. And uh, we're going to address this today. And uh, former Brown DMC. Uh, what do you think about this fast food? How long it takes for it to spoil, bro? First, I'd just like to say peace to the B1 family. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, you said many of the people. So according to medical news today, between 25 to 60% of a person's daily energy intake is through ultra processed foods. These ultra processed foods are what we find at your uh, fast food joints. These are a lot of the prepackaged meals. Uh, like you said, a lot of times we're, you know, through the hustle and bustle, a lot of us don't take the time to prepare a meal. And so, yeah, and these do have long-term implications. I mean, we look on TV, we look on our phones, we see all of these advertisements about live better, eat healthy, and we tend to kind of gloss over those. But when we think about everything that's going on right now, uh, a lot of the this word mandate is starting to be thrown around concerning certain medical treatments. I think it's time for the family to really focus on, okay, what are we going to do about uh, securing a more healthy food food source? Uh, we know that these highly processed foods, like you said, I remember seeing this a few years back. Uh, somebody had a cheeseburger and they left it in their car and it didn't age. And so one has to wonder, okay, if I eat that, what is this going to look like in my stomach? Uh, what does this look like, you know, me trying to digest it and, you know, send it on to... Uh, send it on to his destiny in, in the sewer. What does this look like to the sewer systems? We do know that whatever we waste uh, that comes to our bodies, it is a part of the ecosystem. So I think this is a great conversation to have right now. Uh, here at B1 Ag, we like to talk about solutions. 
But I think before we touch on this solution, I think we really need to dig into the broader implications of eating highly processed foods. Now, uh, one video I'd like to show from you, this is actually a video that was made 10 years ago, which is crazy. But, uh, you know, I looked through the archives and I found a video from 10 years ago that, uh, you know, it was an independent study, just someone, not a doctor, but just someone at home who uh, just wanted to look at, you know, how long does it take, uh, you know, this fast food to spoil you. And the question that what made them take do this story was the fact that uh, you said, have you ever wondered what makes McDonald's food taste so good? However, it costs so little. So y'all check this out because it's very, very inter interesting. It's only a five minute video, so uh, it's not too long, but very interesting. Just one moment. Let me uh, make sure I get the audio. Make sure I get the audio clicked for this. My bad. I got my, my two sacks of goodness right here. So what we're going to do, just going to give you an idea of how this food is breaking down in your body. I'm just going to put it in some jars to kind of show you how it breaks down on its own over time, over the next, you know, four, five, six, seven months. So in here, we've got my favorite right there, the Big Mac. So we're going to put the Big Mac right here in jar number one. Chicken McGrill. There you go. Boy, let me tell you something. The smell of this food, I just want to take a bite out of it already. One of the worst things on the whole menu, the filet o fish. Look at that thing. It still looks terrible. Going right in there. Next, quarter pounder. That actually looks like meat. There's a quarter pounder. Some fantastic fries. So we're just going to dump right in this jar. Right there. In that last jar, we're going to get a hamburger from up the street, from a place where they actually make real hamburgers, where they take the patties, and they press them with their own hands and put them on the grill. You know, it's like real meat. And lastly, french fries from a regular restaurant. See what happens at the same time. Two weeks, french fries from a regular restaurant. Two weeks, french fries from a McDonald's restaurant. Two weeks sweaty, moldy burger in there. That burger's all moldy. It's like this just starting to mold. That's some kind of cheeseburger. And the Big Mac, still nothing. Big Mac hasn't even started to mold yet. Big Mac, still looks like we just bought that thing. Lettuce, a little moldy. Chicken McGrill, definitely seen some better days. That thing is beat up. Filet of fish, look at that white fuzz on the top of it. The quarter pounder, that thing's got a rainforest going on inside there. This burger, same thing. Look, it's starting to get juicy on the bottom. The bun is just like coagulating into some kind of goo. Here's the regular French fries. Those things are black and crazy. Want to see what the McDonald's French fries look like? Check this out. That's right. Some kind of fluke of nature. That's right. This can't explain, but this is what you're eating every time you get these fries. Ooh, that's the Big Mac. That looks good, doesn't it? Mmm. Look at this. Oh, the chicken McGrill looks fantastic. Oh, that's so yummy. Look at the filet of fish. That's very impressive. Quarter pounder really coming to the end of the road. And are you ready for the French fries? You ready? That's right. Look at that, folks. Why are these not breaking down? That's a really good question. And you have to ask yourself, wow, what's that doing in my stomach then?
Big Mac, eight weeks. Mmm, chicken McGrill. I don't even know what that runny liquid goo is right there. Now we move on to the delicious filet of fish. What do we got? Eight weeks. Mossy goodness. Look at that fuzzy little sandwich. Here's the quarter pounder with cheese and the little sweat box that's happening there. Look at that. Looks like the ice age is set in on our quarter pounder with cheese. McDonald's french fries. It's now been two months and look what's happening here. That's right. Still nothing. Ten weeks on the Big Mac. Frosty goodness. Look at the chicken McGrill. Mmm. Ten weeks. All the filet of fish. Ooh, it does it get any better than that? I don't even know what that fuzz on the top is. Week number ten, quarter pounder. Some kind of crazy little like science experiment happening there. Look at that. What is wrong with that? There's not even one little sporozoar on that. There's not nothing breaking down. Nothing. Looks like we bought them yesterday. Now, that uh, was pretty disgusting. But those fries did not look any different from the first day that they bought them. And uh, interestingly enough, you know, this experiment has, you know, it's been done uh, a few times. And uh, actually, a guy, I, this came from a news article from uh, the news in uh, Salt, Lake, Salt Lake City in uh, Utah. A man actually kept a McDonald's burger for 14 years and it did not even break down the way we seen it break down uh, on this particular video. That video was uploaded 10 years ago and this news article about from Salt Lake City, Utah, that was eight years ago. And like he actually kept a McDonald's burger for 14 years. And it did not break down the way that we seen there. What do you got to say for him, Brown? So tying this to what we got going on today. And so we know uh, a lot of people, up, upwards of 7 million uh, people across North America, the eviction moratorium is up. I, I love their fries, too. I, I haven't eaten any in a very long time, you know, after after coming up on this information. Uh, but I think about, you know, people getting kicked out right now. Uh, obviously, having a roof over your head is going to be a priority. But then second to that is, OK, I got to eat. Uh, unfortunately, and this is very ironic to me, the majority in uh, the sister Linus Crown covered this a few days ago uh, very eloquently. Right now, the majority of people who are facing eviction are in the southeast. Uh, they happen to be in some of the most arable land. Arable meaning this is a great place to grow food. And this is where uh, the majority of people are facing eviction. Uh, what does this have to do with processed food? So we also know that we're in the midst of a, uh, we'll, we'll call it C-19 uh, stage. Well, I'm not going to call it stage play, C-19 pandemic. And so, you know, it's like a perfect storm of all of these things. And here at B1Ag, we really like to uh, focus around agriculture and food security. Uh, I think what's understood, understood that need to be explained as far as all of the other political implications but saying this to say, look at the health trap. Uh, I did see an ad the other day that, hey, if you, if you, you know, let us, let, it, let, it, let us give you some medicinal therapy uh, through the jab, you can get a free value meal. And so when I think about what is the actual value of this meal, uh, according to medical news today, and so we're not doctors, uh, we're not doctors, and so we're not giving medical advice, but there's a disease called inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, it's prevalent worldwide, but it's an uptick in Western Western uh, nations such as ours. And all of this is specifically tied to processed foods and beverages. We think about some of the incentives, uh, uh, steak, what is it, steak, steak and shake or shake shack. Uh, a lot of the incentives being given for people to get some medical help to keep themselves healthy 
uh, hey, now are you giving me something healthy? Uh, when we think about these fries, uh, like I said, this is something I grew up on. Uh, it, it pains me that I, I can't let my kids eat these, you know, because I know better. If I didn't know any better, okay, you know, my bad. But, but since I know better, uh, since my eyes have come across not only the visual of these, what I thought were potatoes not breaking down, uh, you know, what did they say? Knowledge is power. Uh, knowing it's half the battle. So right now we're not only in a battle for just, you know, our existence and what we call Turtle Island, North America, but we don't want to just survive. We want to thrive. And so part of this thriving to not uh, die early, not to live, you know, the majority of our lives, you know, sick with all of these different pre-existing conditions that make us subject to all of this wonderful altruistic help. Uh, what are some things we can do as a family? Uh, here at B1 Ag, once again, we like to talk about solutions. We also realized in a lot of areas uh, in the Southeast, it's a lot more, you have a lot more green space per se, uh, whereas you get farther up North uh, in some of the larger cities, you have, uh, you know, you don't necessarily have a lot of green space. Uh, what I do know is there are operations that uh, growing operations that you can implement in your apartment buildings. Uh, I know there's apartment buildings around where we stay, where there's uh, they literally have uh, whole gardens, raised bed gardens at these facilities. These are a few ideas to toss around wherever you're at uh, in the diaspora right now. Are you making best use of the space that you have? Because it really looks like the alternative uh, in why we're worrying about, our, am I going to be able to pay rent? Why we're worrying about, am I going to be able to keep my job? I also saw another uh, article but as we were talking that up in New York City now, they're proposing that, hey, you can't even come in this uh, eating establishment unless you can verify that you've been helped. And so uh, once again, family, as to not you know, be reactionary, how can we be proactive? Uh, how can we take lessons that we've learned in the past? Like I said, I've, I've loved my McDonald's fries. And, and I imagine McDonald's fries isn't any different than Rally's Checkers or Burger King or all of the other fries we, we've loved. Uh, this doesn't mean that we can't eat French fries no more, but I think this is an opportunity to think about. And I do. I know some uh, brothers and sisters that grow potatoes uh, for people wanting to get into agriculture, uh, not just for feeding themselves, but possibly as an enterprise. Now, are there some connections and conversations to be had where you are if you want to continue to enjoy French fries and, and they actually break down in your body naturally? This is one thing because we know Bill Gates with his uh, 246,000 acres of land, he supplies the French fries to McDonald's. Uh, not only the uh, potatoes for the French fries, but he also supplies the onions and the carrots. Now, I would like to also share another video uh, with the B1 Ag family about that Salt Lake City, Utah news report. Uh, it's a very short, this is like maybe three minutes. So it's even shorter than the first one, but I think it's very, uh, it's well worth taking a look at, uh, to just to see exactly what we're talking about. And this is like, we're not talking about conspiracy theory or conjecture or what we think. These are news reports. They're, they're, they're showing you what's going on. These are facts, you know, big facts. Like, you know, like everybody likes to say big facts, period. You know what I'm saying? These are big facts right here. So y'all check this out. Plant-based. And see, bro, I'm even more inclined. Like the first video we watched, the only reason why that mold grew was because it was in a glass container and the water and the condensation that may be caused the deterioration help with the deterioration of that food more so than, you know, uh, just it spoiling on its own because that burger was in that dude's pocket and you see it just dried out. And from the chef from the college, he said like the, you know, that moisture was able to escape and it mummified. But regardless, like if you've seen any, like if you own your refrigerator, you leave food too long, it changes, you know, it, it, it decomposes, it spoils. But what this fast food that we eat does not follow the same natural process because it has been ultra processed. 
And we really have to take a look at what we're putting into our bodies. Because if it takes that long to break down and, and just out here in the natural world, you know, what is it doing in our food system? Like you say, irritable bowel syndrome and things of that nature. You know, uh, how many nutrients are really in this food that in this uh, fast food that we ingest? You know, it, it just brings up a lot of questions. Uh, but it does also point us to uh, very practical solutions and answers. Eat real food, you know, eat real food. Eat real food. Well, how do you get real food? Well, one way is you can grow it. You know, it's, it's, it's it can be that simple. You know, you can grow your own food. You know, this is like I said, I, I, I say this until there's no breath in my body. You know, the creator gave us everything that we need to sustain ourselves naturally when he presented us with land, air and water. You know, through land, air and water and, of course, the sun, you know, uh, nature, you know, we we have everything we need. We put seeds in the ground to grow your own food naturally. And, you know, this food does go through a natural uh, decompositioning process. You know, it spoils, you know, the shelf life of natural food isn't that long, but the nutritional benefits from eating this food can last a lifetime and extend your lifetime. You know, you think about the economic crisis of 2008 uh, up to what's going on now, and you just got to wonder how many more of these life-changing paradigm shifting events can the mel melanated family endure? I mean, we've endured everything over the ages but uh, what one thing we were doing over the ages is producing, uh, producing food. How do I know that? Because, you know, we were the group of people that uh, created the wealth of the West through agriculture and producing food. And so our contention here is that we're going to have to uh, tap into that same energy. Uh, not should, not could, but absolutely have to tap into that same energy, that same ingenuity of producing food. Uh, there's a lot more people on the planet now than uh, when our ancestors were uh, working, uh, you know, for, you know, during what we call slavery. Uh, we have a lot more ailments. Uh, we have a lot more sicknesses that our ancestors didn't have. Uh, and so it's the thing of either you're going to go this way or that way. Uh, is this a thing where everybody's just, oh, I just saw this horrible video about this hamburger that didn't mold, these fries that didn't mold. And I'm going to just start eating healthy tomorrow. Uh, that's not practical. But the more we have these conversations, uh, the more we see that our world around us is changing like by the day. Uh, there are new requirements for a person to have a formidable, you know, day today than it was last week. And I mean, we're not making this up. If you look at the news, the world is changing. The Senate to say, family, we have we have options. We have choices. Uh, there's really nothing at this point outside of uh, fear mongering that is uh, controlling whether or not we're going to learn how to produce food, uh, whether or not we're going to start working with our family, working with our neighbors, uh, working with our loved ones, working with others who just, you know, have the same interest in having access to healthy food. And that starts with learning how to grow it. Uh, if you're, Whether you're starting it in your window just to see what this uh, germination process looks like. Uh, just to see what it looks like to, you know, uh, water your plant. You know, what are the what are the other needs of my plant? You know, un when you understand these things on a rudimentary level, on an individual scale, then it helps you better to produce on a large scale, not just for act to actually eat, but also possibly to sell. Uh, right now, the the big tech people are investing in food systems. Uh, before you know, before LeBron could become one of the greatest black basketball players in the world, he had to learn how to dribble. Uh, he had to learn how to run. It was one time and, you know, he was crawling, then he learned how to run. And over time, he found value in this concept of what we'll call basketball. Over time, I got good. I practiced. I, I trained. Uh, when everybody else was out going, having a good time, I'm in here training. They say he has one of the most uh, strict uh, workout regiments in the world. This is how you become great at something. Practice makes perfect. Uh, when we're talking about producing food, once again, we say it starts with the seed. 
Uh, we right now we're fortunate to be surrounded by information, uh, surrounded by content creators, surrounded by farmers, uh, far, black farmers, you know, trying to find a melanated farmers like trying to find a leprechaun, but they do exist. Uh, if we can seek out farmers like we seek, seek out high end restaurants or seek out uh, uh, exotic, you know, exotic, whether you're talking about people or, or, or products, black farmers are exotic, are exotic gems within our community. And right now, I feel like the knowledge and, and skills that our black farmers have is going to absolutely be one of the most important things that as a community, we're going to have to really take serious. Uh, we see a lot of our brothers and sisters affected by these changes. Any one of us can be affected by those changes. And we see, I imagine there was people in 2008 that, would ne that never thought that they would lose their homes. And we've seen a slow decline. I know up here in central Kentucky, I mean, every day, I literally see dozens more people just in my path, in my daily path. I see dozens more people who yesterday it was all good just a week ago. And so, uh, like I said, food security is, you know, to me, should be one of the top priorities right now for us to galvanize our attention. Uh, we keep seeing, you know, the things going on in entertainment. Uh, this this whole thing uh, waiting on the gov government to come and help. I think uh, some of us have lived long enough now to know that yeah, that's probably not a good idea. And so, you know, with all of our divisions, what is something we can galvanize around? What is something that we can codify around to where we're not, hey, I, I suspect you're trying to eat over there. Hey, I, you know, it, it's no debate. We all need to eat. And we all see that no matter how much money you have, we're all affected by this food system. There's people that got a lot of money. Uh, eat at the same McDonald's as people that don't have money. Eat at the same fast food joints, these uh, same joints that are selling processed food. And so it's not a money thing. It's, it, it boils down to priority. Some people don't have as much access to more healthy food. But once again, is this incentivizing the next generation to come up with more uh, healthy food choices, to come up with more sustainable ways to produce food, to come up with innovative ways to produce food in smaller spaces? through studying urban agriculture, through understanding food science. In these days and times that we live in, you know, these different variants and, uh, you know, this uh, basically this sickness that has changed our daily living, you know, there, you know, often we forget food is medicine. All the medicines that we get these uh, prescriptions to take and everything that most of them are derived from food. And I've always been the type of person, you know, I'm a, a you know, a, a budget baller. I'm a budget shopper. So whenever I can avoid the middleman, that's what I do. I'd rather go straight to the plug. So when it comes to the food and dealing with this commons, uh, this uh, sickness and pandemic that we're dealing with today, uh, there's an article at lifeandhealth.org where they uh, give us the top five foods to help you fight the 19, the 19. And uh, the, one, uh, the one ingredient that they said that really helps is nitric oxide. So the top five nitric oxide sources are beetroot juice, garlic, leafy greens, citrus fruits, as well as nuts and seeds. You know, you, uh, the, you know, the, the beet, the beet, uh, the beetroot juice is the king of raising your nitric oxide levels. They have a lot of nitrates, which helps the body convert uh, those nitrates into nitric oxide. You know, according to one story, consuming a beetroot su a juice supplement raised nitric oxide levels in subjects by 21 percent in 45 minutes. And another su study suggests that you that drinking 3.4 ounces of beetroot juice every day will significantly raise nitric oxide levels in both men and women. Now, as far as garlic, you know, people have been taking garlic for colds for centuries. And that's because garlic boosts levels of nitric oxide by activating nitric oxide synthase, which
which is an en enzyme involved in the conversion of nitric oxide from the amino acid L arginine. Leafy greens, uh, green leafy vegetables like kale, broccoli, cabbage, spinach, arugula, celery, they're all packed with nitrates, which, uh, which converts uh, to nitric oxide in your body. Citrus fruits or anything high in vitamin C. But you know, when we think of citrus fruits, we're talking about oranges, lemons, limes, grapefruit. They're all excellent sources of vitamin C. You know, vitamin C is known to play a critical role in just overall good health. And it raises levels of nitric oxide by increasing the bioavailability and maximization of absorption. Nuts and seeds, almonds, cashews, walnuts, chia seed, flax seeds, pump, pumpkin seeds, and sunflower seeds. They have a lot of arginine. That's the amino acid again. And it helps assist in the production of nitric oxide. So these are foods that we can, natural healthy foods that help us to fight off the 19 or any variant, you know? So, but in the beauty of those foods is that we can grow these foods ourselves. So even if you just want to protect yourself, you and your family, not even for sustaining yourself and, you know, providing your own uh, food system, to self supplement your diet so you don't have to go eat these fast foods and eat these french fries and hamburgers that take 14 plus years to decompose or mama five when they never decompose you know you have you can have your own garlic your nuts and citruses and green and especially your uh your green vegetables your green leafy vegetables growing in your yard and that's and that's your pharmacy you know uh we look at a pharmacy, you know, we think we got to go get a prescription, but uh, literally uh, growing your own food is uh, like having your own pharmacy. Can y'all dig it? Your pharmacy. I don't believe it's a coincidence that, you know, pharmacy <laughs> has the phonetic farm in it. Because all medicines are derived from foods. You know, foods, everything comes from everything comes from the ground, people. You know, I grew up, my grandmother, you know, she was a great cook, but she also studied food as my grandfather was a farmer. And there was a great book that we had called Back to Eden. And in this book, it was just full of all natural remedies to, you know, any kind of ailments that we have in our body. And it all comes from food. You know, just the same way uh, we, as we've gotten away from eating these natural foods, now you have a rise of these uh, cancers and high blood pressures and other body ailments that came along with that. And it's not by happenstance. It's all directly correlated with our diet. And it's very important that we take really pay more attention to what we're eating. You know, this isn't about, well, I want my, I want my fast food. Uh, you can be hard headed if you want to, but this, this stuff is killing us. Us not eating well is killing us. It's killing us. And the, and what's, and what's just more, uh, worrisome is that this food that is killing us, we don't produce it. Now, we've uh, said this many times and have done a whole podcast on, you know, uh, Frederick Douglass saying how food can be used as a weapon in war. And this is a war that we're losing because our health is quickly deteriorating overall. But in, uh, for our people, you know, we, we're just overly represented with certain diseases that can be easily cured by changing our diet. We got to take, make smarter decisions, smarter decisions. That's why we here at B1AG, you know, we really advocate, you know, healthier food choices, not because it's trending, not because it's cool, or it is cool actually. And I'm glad that, you know, it is trending more, but just because it just makes sense, it's practical. And the food is actually good. And there's more varieties of, you know, we just have to educate ourselves on the variety because 
there's a variety of foods that you know we, we may not even be aware of but as you because i'm i cook as well and as i start cooking and i'm like wow i, I never knew this fruit or this vegetable even existed and it's delicious you know we just had a uh, fred to the rick uh on our show uh talking about you know different foods and he does an excellent excellent job of breaking down different types of fruits and vegetables naturally that naturally grow that you know and, and their nutritional value and their productivity in our body to help us from getting sick you know it's it, it goes hand in hand it goes back to that pharmacy now do you want to be dependent on a pill or a jab you know the jab we speak of or do you just want to eat some good food and good you know what i'm saying when i say good food i mean food that is good for you it tastes good you know it's just how you prepare it and some of the stuff you don't even have to prepare it you can eat it raw there is no food preparation you just pick it and eat it how simple is that Farmer Brian, do you have any last words for the people? We have options, family. We have options. Uh, it starts with the seed. I think right now is a perfect excuse for all of us to, to really look at. Now, how much do I know about growing food? Now, I can learn how to shoot a jump shot. I can learn how to uh, play a video game. I can learn how to trade on the stock market. I can learn how to drive. I can learn. There's so many things to learn. And I think we're at a day and time we're learning how to produce food, uh, the process of producing food, uh, if nothing else, to know what to expect when you're looking to purchase food. And so I think right now is a perfect opportunity for us to really have these conversations and, and taking the past conversations, putting it into action. If you are aware of any uh, local urban gardeners around where you live, holler at them. Uh, these tend to be, you know, altruistic people that that love to give information. Uh, you know, reach us, reach out to us. We have some uh, programming at healthyblackfood.com. Uh, but really, you know, take advantage. You know, we we think about these uh, these hack these these ransomware attacks. Uh, I keep hearing murmurs about, you know, these these. Uh, you know, these attacks on the electrical grid per se. And, you know, you don't want to look at it in a conspiratorial space. You want to look at it as, as being Birdman flying any weather, whatever could possibly happen. At least it's something you thought about. Uh, they say a lot of times if you get lost somewhere, lost in the woods, it's not the woods that's going to get you. It's not being prepared, not being able to not slow down. Okay, now what are my options? So send that to say when we're looking at a broader scale of just our overall individual, familial, and communal survival, Food security is a, 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 it is absolutely necessary if we're wanting to achieve the power that I think all of us uh, want to achieve in this realm. So if you would like to have your own pharmacy, if you want your own personal pharmacy, uh, we can teach you how to show you all the basic steps in creating your own pharmacy at healthyblackfood.com sign up uh right now uh your first month is actually free so you can sign up learn how to grow your own food and engage with us every thursday night at eight o'clock eastern standard time and we will if any questions that you have about how to grow your own food we'll be here to answer them for you and we also are connected with uh, the academic world where we can direct you to people to give you more extensive information than we than we have. You know, our goal is to be a conduit, is to be a channel to give you correct information. We want to be able to spread this information. We want to be able to connect you with different organizations that are already doing this work. We want to be able to direct you towards farmers in your area that are already doing this work we want to direct you to these hbcu land grant universities that were created uh for this work of growing food you know this is a world that 
our people that's agricultural world that we've kind of don't pay attention to because we are because I mean we're, we're worried more about what the baby says on stage than uh, you know what goes in our mouth as far as uh, sustaining ourselves. And you know I like the baby's music. You know I can't. I'm not gonna lie, but I'd rather. I'm really more concerned about surviving to not only to the next day, uh, but you know surviving into the future and being healthy doing so. So you can go to healthyblackfood.com, get Black to the Garden, and learn how to grow your own food. If you want to talk to us or you have any questions for us, you can always send any of your questions uh, to b1aghiphop at gmail.com. If you have pictures of your uh, food growing operation or you just want to send us pictures of you know your family out in nature enjoying a garden or whatever, we love to see that. We need to see more visuals of our people in nature enjoying this food, enjoying what the creator gave to us. You know, it's just getting black to the garden, y'all. It's just getting black to the garden. You know, it's very, very important. Also, to help grow this platform, you know, it's very important. Uh, like, share, subscribe to the B1 Ag Daily Bread podcast on YouTube. You know, just put it in B1 Ag Daily Bread podcast in your search bar on YouTube and subscribe. You know, get this information on the regular. You know, let's make this a part of our regular life. Let's make it a part of our life style. You know, it's it's very popular now, you know, to get in the gym and work out and, you know, girls showing off their body, fellas showing off their abs and stuff like that. But a big part of working out is also uh, watching what you eat and the food that you put in your body helps you to be in more shape. Even if it's not, even if even if you're if, even if you're not worried about being healthy as far as you know the way your body operates, even if you're just worried about being healthy just for how your body looks, you know this boils down to the food that we eat. So let's grow this conversation. Uh, B One Ag Daily Bread Podcast. We're here for y'all. We're really here for y'all. You know this is a uh, food security at the at the the underlying theme of everything that we talk about. It all boils down to not just health, food, nutrition, but food security, because like Frederick Douglass said, food can be used as a weapon of war, especially when you don't have control of where your food comes from and how you eat on a daily. You know, uh, just using myself, for example. Uh, my grandfather, was, I grew up farming with my grandfather. And I didn't realize this until I went to college that, wow, you know, when I was in college, uh, what I ate or how how well I ate was determined about by how much money I had in my pocket. But growing up with my grandfather, with us farming, whether we had a lot of money or whether we had no money at all, we ate rich. We ate wealthy. You know what I'm saying? We ate healthy. You know, that's that's what uh, that's what allowed me to grow and be big and healthy and strong to play football and to earn a college scholarship to be a student athlete. You know, it all started with my diet. It all started with what I was putting in my body. And that was great food. So. At the end of the day, Farmer Brown. It's so much to learn from growing your own food, bro. And if the people really, really want to know something, what do they need to do, bro? If you really want to know something, just put them prints in the mud and learn how to grow something. We'd like to thank y'all again for checking in to B1 Ag Daily Bread Podcast. <laughs> J Monty 1738 says he's never eating McDonald's again. <laughs> Let's make it go viral like the variant. Let's make healthy food the new variant. Yes, healthy food the new variant. That's the healthy variant. You know, that's the healthy H variant. Yes. So be prosperous. Be well, like be loving. Let's put some seeds of love out in the world. Let's be abundant. Let's eat better. Let's treat each other better. Let's treat ourselves better. 
Let's treat our bodies better. Let's fight against these variants by eating those foods, especially green leafy vegetables, which are easily, easily grown in your yard, easily grown in pots, easily grown in uh, raised bed gardens, easily grown. You can grow, you can grow green leafy vegetables in an old a sink, in an old bathtub. You can grow food in a, a old dresser drawer. You can grow food in a shoe, literally. You know, anything that hold old pots and pans, anything that will hold the soil, you can grow food in it. So let's get to it, y'all. Again, I'm John Henry Harris. It's Farmer Brown MC. We bid you adieu till next time. Let's grow harder.